Hola Beto. Hola. Como uh, inmigrante mexicano y he tenido aquí arriba de 54 años en este país, yo como residente de Cedar County, en los últimos 48, 48 años te doy la bienvenida. Gracias. A este es el condado más bonito del estado de Iowa. Sí. <risa> Gracias. ¿Y, ¿Y su nombre, señor? Oh, perdón. José Carrillo. Ok. Señor Carrillo, gracias uh, para el bienvenido y para estar aquí con nosotros esta mañana. Es, es un honor uh, correr en esta campaña con usted y con la gente que están aquí trabajando juntos en las soluciones de los retos que tenemos del cambio climático, de la economía, de, de cuidado de salud. Y, y sabemos, conocemos que uh, la, la, la última... Uh, reto uh, es de la democracia de este país y la necesidad de que cada persona puede participar y podemos contar en cada voz y en, en cada voto. Y, y por eso yo quiero dar las gracias a usted y, y a su familia y en esta comunidad uh, tan, tan bonito. Gracias. Me pregunta, una pregunta. Sí, por favor. Uh, cuando yo ingresé, yo no necesité ningún médico. Ahora se necesitan méritos para poder empezar a los Estados Unidos. Mi único mérito fue que yo quería trabajar duro sí. para ayudar a mi familia. Gracias. Is there any kind of translation? I, I, I will translate. Yeah, let me. You, you got it. You got it, folks. No, no problem. Um, I, I can Yes. So, so, so Jose, first of all, welcoming me to, to the community, um, saying Cedar County is the most beautiful county in the state of Iowa. Um, and, and talking about um, proposed changes to our, our immigration laws that, that would focus on, uh, or, or maybe exclusively on merit, instead of family reunification, or being able to work some of the jobs here in this community or across Iowa or across this country that no one born in this state or in this country for whatever reason is willing to work right now. And so, Jose, I, I agree with you that, that we need to make sure that we value what we have right now, that those who've chosen to come to this country, your family and mine, although mine may have been you know, a, a few decades before yours, the Irish fleeing famine that consumed more than one million lives on that one island, coming to the one place that would take them in, and they're doing everything they could to get ahead for themselves and for their kids, but also to contribute to our shared success and our greatness. That's exactly what immigrants and asylum seekers who are arriving in this country today are trying to do and will do if we give them the chance. So yes, let's change our immigration laws, but let's ensure that those changes reflect our values and our learned and shared history. Let's make sure that dreamers, there's more than a million in the United States of America, are forever freed from any fear of deportation back to a country they do not know. And let's make sure that we lift those visa caps so that if you do want to reunite with your family, if you do want to work a job uh, here in this community or in Storm Lake where we met immigrants who are following the meatpacking jobs or in any part of this country where we know that your presence and your work will be a net contribution and benefit to the rest of us, let's make sure that you don't have to wait in a, in a line that is 20 or 25 years long. And then lastly, and most importantly perhaps, because Sarah brought this up again at the beginning, those who have traveled 2,000 miles from the deadliest countries on the face of the planet today with their little kids uh, three years or three months in tow, doing what any of us would do if faced with the same set of conditions and choices. Let's make sure that we do not greet them with a wall or with a cage for their kids or deportation for their moms. Let's ensure that those families who have been separated are reunited at once and that we follow our asylum laws and the moral mandate to make sure that we do the right thing by and for one another. Thank you for asking me.